Ryan Sangalia from Ring Magazine here with uh, WBO Flyweight Champion Brian Valoria. Brian, you're here in Manila. You just finished up a workout. Tell me how your conditioning is. Um, because last fight, of course, with Giovanni Segura, you had a lot to prove in that fight. Now you're fighting a third fight with Omar Nino. Um, tell me where you are mentally. Are you up for this fight like you were for the last one? Of course, of course. I've been up for this fight for a long time now. And I'm really wanting to prove to my, not only to myself, but to, to everybody out there that Nino is not up to my caliber. You know, I think I think I beat myself in the last two fights um, against him. And, and right now, I'm going to have to bring 110%. I'm going to bring everything that I have in my arsenal to defeat a guy like uh, Nino. And um, I'm just going to make a, a good work out of him. Um, tell me, um, you know, you say he's not in your caliber. Um, you've had some distractions in the past, like the first fight, you admitted that you weren't in the best of shape. Um, tell me, what, is, what have been the transitions since that first and second fight uh, to being the fighter that you are now? It's a lot of hard work. Hard work and not taking anything for granted. Um, just going into every fight like it's my last fight, which, you know, I'm taking it, you know, with a grain of salt. I'm just going to take every fight like it's going to be my last fight, like uh, like this is going to ride on everything. And that's just how my mentality is now. Um, you know, every fight is going to be tough. And I know even if a guy like Omar Nino or if a guy like Segura, I'm going to bring every, my best foot forward. And this is the same, you know, same way, same mentality as I brought into the last couple of fights with Miranda and with Segura. And, um, you know, I trained really hard, I trained three, three months for this fight. And uh, I trained every bit of uh, uh, as hard as I did for the Segura fight. So I, I didn't let anything um, I, I, I didn't let anything back, or I didn't hold anything back for, for this training camp. Uh, what were the issues? Um, uh, obviously, like, did, you have, did you have any issues where, like, you know, the fight was postponed, and then you had to like take a break from training to, to avoid peaking early? Yeah, it was just a little bit of an adjustment. It wasn't so bad, you know. I just took, um, uh, we just re recalibrated my schedule, but it wasn't that far off. Um, I just continued my work, you know. I didn't really, you know, let my foot off the pedal too much. I just, I just, you know, did a little bit so I didn't peak too fast or peak too uh, too early, and I just continued work after that. It wasn't, it wasn't that big of a difference, though. And um, tell me, um, I know um, I spoke with Gary, and he he wanted to see. Uh, he wanted to have assurances that uh, that everyone will be clean in this fight um, because uh, Nuno had tested positive in the second fight for uh, amphetamines. Um, are you reasonable confident, reasonably confident that you're going to see a clean Omar Nino? And do you know what the protocol is going to be? Is it going to be the same as usual? Yeah, it's going to be. You know, uh, everyone's aware of what Omar did in his past. Uh, you know, his history with drugs and, and, and testing positive for it. So everybody's going to keep an eye out for it. Um, I'm completely uh, confident with the GAB, with the uh, gaming and board, uh, with you know how they're going to take care of this uh, situation. But um, no, I'm I just it's the one less thing I need to worry about. I just need to worry about getting myself ready for this fight, and you know worry about that later. But then right now, you know, uh, I think everybody has their eye on it, and everyone's taking care of it and in, in the right you know in the right spots for it to uh, to to clear it up if everything goes wrong. Um, you know, actually, I want to get your perspective on this because that's been a hot button su subject in recent years. Uh, um, even actually, just today, uh, Lamont Peterson tested positive in the VADA testing. Uh, his fight with Amir Khan is in jeopardy. Um, what is your stance on uh, the drug testing and, and boxing? Um, do you, do you think that that's going to be the trend where we're going to see more stringent testing, like what you would see in like the NFL? I think it's important for the. Um for the, uh, the the level uh, the, the playing field to be on a level basis you know just everybody fighting the same level um, I think it, it goes as far, uh, it goes to show you like in baseball too you know everybody doesn't want to be uh, you know known to be on steroids or, or all that but it's, it's, it's for the uh, protection of the fighters for both parties and you know just to uh, keep everybody safe and and on the same playing field so you know I'm behind the drug testing I've done it back you know during the Olympics and um, you know if, if, if they do put it like Olympic style training, uh, Olympic style uh, drug, um, you know, drug testing. Then you know, I'm, I'm up for it. I'm not, I'm not one that <laughs> that does it anyway. So I don't have nothing to worry about. And um, I think it it keeps everybody on the on the street on a straight line and and not having to take any shortcuts in the sport. Um, you know, I just saw um, you know Jerry Penalosa was giving you some tips. Uh, um, tell me. Um, you know, what is it like to have um, a legend like him giving you advice uh, while you're working out? You know, in this type of sport, um, you know, you have to keep your mind open and, and understand that you're learning every single day. And for me, you know, even though I've been you know Olympics and been a world champion three times, I always keep my mind open and my heart open and, and try to learn from, from my elders or learn from even even guys who, who have something to say and try to take it in and, and try to use that. and. 
and, and use it into my arsenal. So, um, but to have Jerry, I mean, it's great. It's great to have a, a legend like him, one of the greatest in the sport, um, coming out of the Philippines and in the, uh, the sport of boxing. So when he says something, you know, you better be listening because there's very, very few chances that you get when road champions like that gives you, uh, gives you tips and, and tricks in the ring. Final question, I know you're a huge Lakers fan. Uh, Lakers are having a little bit tougher series than, uh, than you probably thought. You know, the Nuggets are giving a good um, game of it, but um, of course, Andrew Bynum's coming into his own now. Tell me about how you're feeling so far in the playoffs. They're just, they're just waiting for uh, our test to come back. So they're going to lose this one just so, you know, they can get up to game six and uh, welcome more on our test back. But they got this in bag. I, they, they should win the next fight, um, the next game. And, uh, you know, I'm just glad that the uh, the bench is coming out on their own, you know, with the guys like Steve Blake hitting the game winner last game. And with um, um, with Jordan Hill coming out, you know, God knows, hopefully everything goes right with him and his, and his case. <laughs> you know, but uh, I'm glad the Lakers are coming out. You know, this, it's a great time for everybody uh, to shine and, and um, hopefully they'll get the 17th World Championship.